Welcome to Figure Feedback. My name is Jeremy and this video is an unboxing and initial setup of the new FlashForge AD5X 3D printer. Been waiting for this one for a while. And thankfully, it's not complicated to set up. So this is what you get in the box. You got your normal tools, you got some Allen keys, some cutters, you got yourself a Phillips head screwdriver and a few screws. Fortunately, you only need four. These red clips here attach to the spool holders so that you can fit some oddball filaments on there without worrying about them falling off. You're going to get yourself a power cable as well that is connected to the very back of the printer. And this one also came with an additional extra fifth spool holder to replace any ones that might get lost or broken. And this is where the magic is. This is the new IFS unit. It has four different spool holders that are numbered that need to go in specific spots. And then the IFS unit itself is located right on the top. And you're also going to get four colored rolls of sample filament and the tube that connects all of the other four together into the print head. Now, the first thing you're going to need to do is put the screen up and it's held in place with this bracket piece. So you got to do is just unscrew those four screws and then you'll be able to flip the screen over to the front. The ribbon cable is already attached to the back of the screen, so you don't have to worry about fiddling with that. And that is amazing. I cannot stand those ribbon cables. But once you get the entire bracket off, all you have to do is just take the screen and just set it into the spots where it's supposed to be on the upper left hand side. And then you can just slide everything to the left in order to lock it into place. So check this out here. So you just line it up really easily. You can see it very clearly from the side. And then once you get those tabs into the frame, just push it over to the left. Boom, snaps right into place. Easy peasy. So the screen is done. Got a few more things to do now. All right, next, I have to attach the IFS. But before we get to that big gray piece, you need to attach the bracket. And there's open spots right there on the frame that accept two little screws. And you just slot those in and tighten those up nice and snug. And that will mount the mount to the frame. And from there, here's a closer look at the IFS unit. You see that it's got these little PTFE uh, tubes that are at the bottom, labeled one through four, and connecting it to the mount is just a matter of lining it up and twisting it. So there's no tools necessary for it to connect. Just line it up, you'll feel it catch, and then just twist it over to the right, and then it just locks in place. And we are going to end up putting the PTFE tubes in the top one by one. And it's just really easy to do to just slot those in. If you want to decouple them, it's just like any other PTFE tube. It has that little circular button that you press down so you can pull the tube out. But in this case, just put them straight in. And then the other end of that tube is the part that goes directly into the top of the tool head. So you just push that down. There's a little collar there too that you push down and it will snugly lock it into place. And the IFS, is installed. Next, you're going to have to connect the extruder cable to the PTFE tubes just so that things can look a little bit neater. There's a little bracket clip for that, so that's just really easy to do. Snap it however you want. And then flipping it over on the back, we have to power the IFS. So it has this cable that's very similar to the ones that you would see in a bamboo lab printer. And one end goes directly into the back of the printer. And then the other end goes into the IFS unit on the side. It goes in a very uh, specific way, but it goes in nice and smooth. And then that cable is just kind of dangling there. But there is another bracket piece that you use two screws to secure that to the frame. And then you can just stick the cable right underneath it. It just slots right in. It's nice and flush. Then you just tighten that down so that that cable doesn't go flying around. And job done. There's the poop shoot in the back as well. 
Now it's time to attach the spool holders and they are labeled one through four. You have to grab the spool holder that corresponds to the number on the frame. And that's where that particular spool holder has to go. Flash forward says that has to do with different retraction distances. So they recommend that you do not mix these up, but putting them on is really easy. They just slot right onto the frame and you just push it down and it snugly secures itself right there to the frame. You also have to make sure that the number the sticker on the spool holder is facing the inside so just make sure that that's closest to the frame that's all four and you see that it goes one two three four starting from the top left in this image here and then right underneath that is going to be two to the right is going to be three and then the upper right hand corner is four get all those nice and secure and it's pretty much time to take out the screws for the bed. There are three screws that hold the bed in place in transit. So just grab yourself one of those Allen keys and just get to unscrewing those three screws. The arrows are gonna tell you exactly where those screws are so you won't accidentally unscrew something that you're not supposed to. Take those all out and the bed is now free. And you are free to plug in the printer and this is what you're gonna see after the initial flash forward screen. It's gonna be the setup where you select the language and then you also have to decide whether or not you wanna connect it to your Wi-Fi. You don't have to, but if you do wanna connect it to your Wi-Fi, you absolutely can. Then after that, you have the option of binding your account to Flash Forge's cloud. Again, you don't have to do that, but if you want to use like the Flash Maker app, it'll make things a little bit easier for you. Now is the calibration process. And from this step here is going to home the bed, is going to level the bed, and it's going to run through vibration compensation. This entire process took around eight to nine minutes, so it's very quick. You see here that it is leveling the bed. So if you already have the Adventure 5M and the 5M Pro, this process will be very, very familiar to you, and it's done quickly, and you can redo it whenever you want. Now it comes time to load up the filament. So here's the thing, when you take the filament and you push it into the bottom of the IFS, it's gonna automatically sense it. It's gonna get the gears moving and you just sort of hold it up there until it catches and then it'll pull the filament in. At that point, you can select what filament you have, which is PLA, ABS, PETG, TPU, PLA carbon fiber, PETG carbon fiber, or silk PLA, and then you choose the appropriate color, and then you just accept everything, and then you can move on to one of the other spools. And I'm gonna show you what it looks like from the side. So I've got this black filament loaded up in the number four spot, so you just kind of stick that up there, and once you get past a certain threshold, you'll hear the IFS starting to move its gears. And then once it catches, it'll start pulling the filament in through the tube, bringing it towards the print head, but not pushing it directly into the extruder as if you're gonna print with it. It's just gonna get it close enough so you can see that it is spinning right now. And then here is a uh, further back shot for you. I'm going to uh, load up some white filament here just so you can see what it's like from this angle. And you see, I also have one of those red clips on that spool holder as well, just to keep this particular roll from falling off because it has a wider diameter in the middle. And this is what the poop looks like. It has a little bit of privacy, so it poops behind a little door. So you can see it coming out a little bit, but you know, not the entire thing. And the filament cutter, it cuts quite aggressively. And there's also a nozzle wiper right behind there. And now it's time for the very first layer of the test print that it will automatically start doing. This is like a coin with a Flash Forge logo on it in two colors. And it also by default is going to print a uh, purge tower or prime tower rather, in addition to pooping when it needs to, but you can turn that off in Orca Slicer if you want. And when it's time to change colors, it's gonna go back and poop and then watch this. It just shoots it right out of the 
back. So here's a look at that coin. It was printed with some light gray as well as a slightly translucent white filament. And that's why the white isn't completely opaque like the way that I like it. But this was just the test print. The same day, I did a live stream. I did a couple more live prints. One of them being this multicolor Mass Effect N7 keychain made with a black, red, and a more opaque white filament. And this took about 25, 26 minutes, somewhere in there to print. And I think that it came out pretty good. And then the next thing that I printed is Ben Hex Chip Clip, which is a nice little print that I enjoy doing. It takes about 25 minutes to print, and it's just a little clip that you put on your potato chip bags. And this was just made in the gray PLA, and this came out pretty good as well. And the last print that I want to show you for this initial impressions is this Hue Forge print of the Joker done in only two colors. And this one took about an hour and a half to an hour and 45 minutes to print. And I think this came out looking really, really good. But I still have a lot more printing and a lot more testing to do. This is just an initial unboxing and setup and the first few prints that I made with this printer. So if you want to be kept in the loop about the things that this printer can do and how it's going to perform, be sure to subscribe to this channel. And I've also created a playlist specifically for the 85X that you'll be able to take a look at all of the videos associated with this printer. So that is all for now. I want to thank you all so much for watching. There's going to be a lot more coming about this. Trust me. And until then, take care of yourselves and I'll speak to you soon.